Um, greetings from Auckland, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Zahi Barber. I'm a, a head of pharmacy practice here at School of Pharmacy, University of Auckland. I'm also editor-in-chief of Journal of Pharmaceutical Policy and Practice. And today I'm going to talk a bit about, uh, give you sort of introduction about the journal uh, Pharmaceutical Policy and Practice, which was formerly known as um, Southern Med Review. Um, it's an open access peer-reviewed journal, and the objective of this journal is to uh, provide a platform for researchers to disseminate empirical research findings um, with the aim that people everywhere have access to medicines they need and use them rationally. Journal of Pharmaceutical Policy and Practice, now it's called, encompasses all aspects of pharm uh, pharmacy, whether it's clinical, social, administrative, or economic, um, and provides a platform to researchers, academics, and practitioners from around the world to share new evidence, concerns, and perspectives. Um, just to share around a bit of history of the Southern Med Review, it was started in December 2008 uh, by me. I was the founding editor of the journal, and um, the objective was to promote pharmaceutical policy research, um, especially um, in low- and middle-income countries. It was a biannual peer-reviewed scientific journal, and up until December 2012, which is last year, the journal published more than 70 papers with authors from 45 countries. Um, we cover a diverse range of issues uh, in the macro-pharmaceutical policy level. So we, we covered issues which are, were related to medicines access and also covered issues which were related to medicines use. So medicines access issues covered were governance, development, um, pharmaceutical systems, pharmacoeconomics, medicines pricing policies, patents, and TRIPS, medicines access and affordability. The issues um, which were covered related to medicines use were socio-behavioral aspects of medicines use, pharmacoepidemiology, pharmacovigilance, um, drug utilization studies, farms practice issues and concern. Um, the journal has been unique in many ways. It has been unique uh, in publishing the work and supporting the work of new researchers. Um, we also documented the pharmaceutical situation of low and middle income countries and debated pertinent uh, pharmaceutical policy questions um, in, in the journal. Um, the, the journal also published studies on the pharmaceutical situation uh, of the countries where little or no uh, pharmaceutical literature was available. So the example of these countries, I would say, were Slovenia, Medicinia, Macedonia, and Afghanistan. Um, the journal's work has been recognized at a global level, and according to WHO, uh, it fulfilled a global need. Um, for example, the studies which were published um, on Vietnam and Thailand, they were instrumental in changing medicines pricing policies in these countries. Um, currently, the journal uh, is indexed in Scopus, Embase, and, and Pub, uh, PubMed Central. And now, because of the journal's success and its niche in pharmaceutical policy, um, the Biomed Central, a UK-based publisher, has now is now relaunching the journal as Journal of Pharmaceutical policy and practice. Uh, the new journal will focus more on global agenda, including high income in economies, and we, have, we hope to receive many more publications um, in the future from these countries as well. Thank you.